Well, good morning. Every, uh, yes, it is good morning this morning. It's usually in the afternoon, but uh, we appreciate everybody showing up uh, at our council meeting. It's Tuesday, December 13, 2016. It's at 9 a.m. here at City Hall, 116 West Bridge Street, Granbury, Texas. The Granbury City Council special meeting and regular meeting is now called to order. I'd like to call upon uh, Robert Wright with Abundant Life Community Church to lead us in our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge led by Councilman Tony Mobley. All rise, please. Father God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and uh, I'm, I'm here because you sent me here. I'm, I'm here because uh, this, this is what you want me to do, and the uh, city of Granbury has been so blessed uh, and, and it's, has been such a blessing and we're, we're just asking for, for peace to come in the house we're, we're asking for Jesus to come and sit down and have communion with us so that the business can progress according to your will Jesus and it's uh, such an honor to be standing in front of such great people and, and all these things we ask in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. If you would join me in the pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Without the Texas flag. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Yes, sir, it is really loud when there's not a lot of people out there. Well, now go into our consent agenda. Those items being, number one, consider adopting resolution 16-19 in regards to the Texas State and Municipal Lease Purchase Program number 500203-001 between the City of Granbury and Clayton Holdings, LLC for the purchase of the light slash air rescue truck. Number two is to consider adopting ordinance 16-66, amending the city codes of ordinance section 13-03 on the Municipal Utility Advisory Board. Council, you've had an opportunity to look at these two items. Are there any of these items that you wish to discuss or to pull off of the uh, consent agenda at this time and move to the deliberation agenda? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion by Councilperson Myers. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second by Councilman Mobley. Councilors, any more discussion on these two items? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <coughs> the consent agenda is approved. Next, we'll move into the deliberation agenda. That first item being consider awarding the proposal for the DWSRF water meter replacement project to Aqua Metrics contingent upon approval of the contract <coughs> by the Texas Water Development Board. City Manager Chris Kaufman, or you have a staff person to talk on this item, or are you going to talk? Um, I would like to call on Keith Kendall. He's our engineer of record, and let him go through the history and a little bit about where we're at. And, and then Ava, of course, is here if you have any questions. Mr. Kendall. Good morning, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, we Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you this morning. Uh, we're pleased to report that we did receive one bid from Aquametrics. Uh, that bid was approximately 165000 below our estimate that we have. Uh, the total bid amount is $2,098,387.29. Uh, we do need that motion made if you do so approve contingent upon the Texas Water Development Board approval. We'll be forwarding contract documents to them if you decide to go forward. Our estimate was approximately $2,262,473. Uh, normally when you get one bid, you usually come in higher, but here we're actually below that. Uh, there's a little bit of background. I believe one of the reasons that we only got one bid, even though we had five bidders show up at the pre-proposal meeting, is we wanted the option to go electric as well. Uh, Aquametrics was the only one with census that had the flexibility to do that in-house. We did know of two other bidders that were trying to team up with other companies that do electric. But if your question is, why did we only get one bid, we believe that's probably the answer why, uh, that we only got one bid, because we had made it plain in the RFP 
that we wanted to have the option to expand this to go to electric as well. And just at this point in time, there's just not a lot of companies that do that within house. Uh, why the other companies did not team up and submit a bid or didn't feel like they were going to be competitive, I don't know. We haven't checked into that. Uh, but I will say that upon evaluation of the bid, uh, within it, it appears to meet all the needs that we requested within our request for proposal. The price is certainly within <coughs> what we expected of the estimate as well, so we would recommend approval and moving forward with this contract. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, Keith, thank you, Keith. Council, is there any questions for Keith Kendall at this time? I, I've got one for Pete. <coughs> there was another company that, <coughs> excuse me, actually came down and talked to us about this uh, a couple of years ago. I think they were out of Houston. Is this the same company or is it a different company? Uh, it may have been a different company if they were out of Houston. Uh, I think you're talking company. about Snyder Electric. Do you remember when you first got here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Snyder. Okay. Right. Different company. So they no, we weren't involved at that time, so I would leave that up to city staff to answer that at this point. Was there the one that actually brought the water deal to us, the meters? No. Apparently they didn't um, want to bid. I don't know. Do we send bids to them? No, we don't send bids to people we advertise in the in the marketplace and it's up to okay. them to respond but they knew about it okay and I will say that we had a very you know there's not that many AMI meter companies in in the United States across there so having five at your free proposal meeting grew a lot of interest but as I explained I think they're having the electrical option and requiring them to be able to have that option to expand to it uh, I know for when we talked with Zenner and Badger they were trying to team up with a couple of other companies to go forward and why that didn't go forward, I don't know. Uh, within it, but it didn't appear to play a role in the pricing, per se, because what we had looked for the estimate, they actually came in well below that. Mayor, and Councilman Couch. Well, I just think it's important that uh, even though this is a, a two million plus uh, capital expenditure, that um, given the uh, given the efficiency of what the meters will do for us that really this will pay for itself over time so it's really not on the water customer um, other than through efficiencies so this is uh, this is uh, is this the company that did the uh, testing for us yes sir that's yeah, correct that's I, okay. I do have a question for Ava from May Ava thought she was going to get out of this, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I might involve Keith, too. On uh, item number 10, or, yeah, no, item number 9 in the, uh, the listing of the cost there, uh, its estimated quantity is 1. It's called Leak deduct, uh, Detection Proposal, Annual Cost with 3% Increase, Product and Setup, $178,475.47 and it's done by someone called LD Services. Is this $178,000 uh, with that 3% increase going to be a, a continuing cost? And if so, did we have that in our original thought process uh, where we uh, calculated that we'd have some 200000 in annual savings from this package? So the 178,000 on item nine, and if I misspeak, um, one of the representatives from Aquametrics is here as well. Okay. That is part of the construction. Um, so that will not be something that um, we will have to pay unless our system is growing and we want to install more leak detections. <laughs> so um, it is not an annual maintenance cost. The annual maintenance cost is uh, listed later about $40,000 and that includes the maintenance on all of our meters, the maintenance on the software, the FlexNet sy system, the customer portal as well, and, um, and uh, hosting the system. So, um, but as far as the leak detection uh, proposal, that is um, when I talk to the representatives, some of this built-in increase is based on our population, meter population growing over time.
question. So that's that's then included in the total bid, and but yes. will not be an incurring re recurring cost. No, the only recurring cost is the main annual maintenance, maintenance cost. Of the software. And the meters, and the customer portal, and the a uh, hosting. So what's your question? Bet your papers. Fifteen thousand. Mayor. Councilperson uh, Myers. I have a question to Ava as well. In regards to the customer portal, and you may know this or, or one of the other uh, designers of the software, is that something that we're going to have to upgrade our system with? So, so that is part of, because we are purchasing the software through Aquametrics, mm -hmm. they own the software, so we will be getting the automatic upgrades each year. And again, that is part of our annual maintenance cost, and the <coughs> one I referred to around forty thousand dollars, that will include that as well. And we should be getting up to date updates on on this customer portal. And we were able to review. We had a demo last week to see again what the customers can see throughout our system. We can access. If they call us and look at their phones, smartphones, and pull up the charts, graphs, the information, the alerts they set, we are able to see that. So we are able to have that conversation with them and answer any questions that they might have. And they will be able to track their consumption on an hourly basis. <coughs> will that be app-based or will that be web-based? Will that be on an app? Or? It will be both. OK. So it, um, there's a term for this when the <laughs> software is smart enough that you can actually pull, um, pull it up on your smartphones. What is that term? So, dynamic, dynamic display. display. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so you just save, you just save that web as an, as an app, and then when you click on it, Oh, it's on a your shortcut phone. on your yeah. phone, yes. So, okay. So will it be able to give you notifications in that app? Yes, you can set on alerts time. depending on what you are interested in to notify you if you reach a certain consumption. So, yes, you can set different alerts and notifications. So you would be, you would be notified if for any reason there is a much higher consumption that you anticipated on using that month. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Council, any more uh, questions for uh, Ava or Keith and her or Chris? We have Justin with Aquametrics here as well. Y'all have a question for him. Okay. Very very good. Thank you. <coughs> oh, no. Mayor, one one last question. Councilperson I Mayor. forgot about this. Um, on that customer portal, it was based on a certain amount of customers, like 1,500 customers? Yes, we were estimating um, how many cu customers. Um, I think the system comes with 1,500. And uh, after that, if other customers want to sign up, <coughs> it will be a $2 charge. Three. $3 mm -hmm. for the customer or $3 for the city? $3 um, per portal, per customer. But it'll be, you know, something the city is um, absorbing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So if no more questions, I'll entertain a motion then, and I will read in the dollar amount, but I'll entertain a motion for uh, awarding the proposal for the DWSRF water meter placement project to Aqua metrics continues upon the approval of the contract by Texas Water Development Board <coughs> for the uh, construction amount of two million ninety eight three hundred eighty seven thousand twenty nine so moved. I have a motion by Councilman Couch second I have a second by Councilman Mobley Council any more discussion on this item <coughs> all in favor <laughs> say aye. 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 aye all opposed say no that is approved our next item on the deliberation agenda is item number four, consider awarding the bid for the downtown streetscape and pedestrian improvement project between the city of Granbury, Texas and the Texas Department of Transportation, funded under the Transportation Alternative Program, which is the <coughs> app program, and appropriation, appropriate the necessary funds. 
I'm going to call upon our city manager to kick this off, if you would, please, okay. Chris. If you all recall, this uh, project was uh, discussed <laughs> almost a decade ago, and uh, we, we did not receive the award back in 2008. And then um, when, upon my arrival, you all were in the process of submitting this grant application. And so it's been about 18 months since, since we had this discussion with Mr. Bosco in numbers. And um, so anyway, like a long story short, the bids came in, and or the bid came in, and Chris will go over that report with you, and then uh, we've got some continuous ideas we'd like to share with you. So go ahead, Chris. Chris Bosco with Freeze and Nichols. Um, as, as Chris mentioned, we, we uh, put the TAP project out for bid and actually received bids on uh, December 8th, so last Thursday. Uh, we received one bid. Uh, we actually had 46 plan holders. Now, a lot of those are subs. The, there was 12 general contractors that were plan holders. Uh, we received one bid um, from the Fane Group. Uh, that bid, the base bid, so the base bid, the way we put it out, the base bid is all the transportation tap portion, and then the bid alternate was for the water line work. Uh, the base bid uh, came in at $2 million. $326,361. Uh, the bid alternate uh, for the waterline improvements is $272,246. <laughs> um, the TAP project, um, the budget that we had from the, the grant was $1,900,800. Uh, which of that uh, grant uh, tech stock participation amount is one million five hundred and twenty thousand six forty. Um, some information on the Fane Group. Um, they are a, a, a contractor with quite a bit of experience. In fact, quite a bit of streetscape experience. Um, they they've done fifteen streetscape projects over the last ten years. Um, we happen to have worked with them on four of them in the Fort Worth area. They do quite a bit of the work in Fort Worth. Uh, they also uh, did the McKinney downtown square that, you know, that, that's been mentioned in past discussions. Another notable streetscape that they did was the 7th Street and Museum Way. So that's that area in Fort Worth. That, that's a private development, but that's uh, uh, one of their projects as well. Uh, so they have quite a bit of experience in, uh, in this type of work. Um, the, um, in terms of the uh, bid amount, um, you know, in, in evaluating that, that increased cost, um, what we're seeing in comparison to our estimate was um, driven by the, the sidewalk paver type cost uh, came in higher than we anticipated. Um, and one thing I wanted to share with you as well is uh, have been having conversations with TechStock about the possibility of requesting some additional funds to fill the gap in what we had originally had in the grant. Uh, and so TechStock's requested that uh, Chris send them a, a request in writing uh, for them to forward down to Austin for that consideration. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to open up to any questions that you may have. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Bosco or our city manager? Mayor, when I come out of shock, I'll start asking questions. Councilman Allen. <laughs> Chris, you stood here a year ago or so when we had a budget It's going to cost the taxpayers $400,000. And now you're saying it's going to cost us how much? Um, the if we move forward with this bid amount, the uh, local share will be eight hundred and five thousand seven twenty-one. That's double, double. And I asked the question: Could we live within our budget? And you said yes. And I asked you if uh, if the, if y'all got estimates on this and stuff, and you said y'all done this in the past. How did y'all miss it that far? Um, yeah, we've done quite a bit of streetscape, and, and we thought it was going to bid within, within the budget amount. Um, 
the fact of getting one one bidder on this project um, and the you know the quantity of work out there uh, I think the market was higher than we anticipated for um, the bid package that we put out what is y'all's fee on there I didn't see a breakdown um, for free from that I did not bring that information with me but I could get that for you yeah do you have it Ava <laughs> No, she's not prepared to answer that question. Okay. Do you know, Chris? We've probably paid about $180,000 towards Freeze Nichols. If I was looking. So far. But what my question is, <coughs> what's the total amount going to cost for Freeze and Nichols? We don't have that answer today. Is there any way y'all can take that half million out of y'all's pay? <laughs> uh, since y'all added to it, can y'all take it out? You just won't get a bonus this year, okay, Chris? Yeah, but, um, you know, we'll just, we, uh, in, in our business, you know, we're always trying to anticipate the market, but in some cases, um, your project comes in higher than we anticipated. Mayor. Mayor. Uh, Councilperson Myers. Well, I guess as we listen to the last line item, it helps when you get one bid, and sometimes it doesn't help when you get one bid. Um, taking us back to last year, you said there were three or four contractors that do these types of projects. Is there a reason why no one else bid on the project this time? I, I don't have a specific answer other so there was a contractor I was working through during the design that's a Fort Worth contractor uh, they elected not to bid and the reason they gave me at the time was that they had too much going on um, I, I would imagine that is a case with a lot of the contractors a lot of work going on in the Metroplex um, that being said you know Fane Group is uh, a very qualified contractor for this type of work so I think we're fortunate that they pr uh, provided a bid uh, but I don't have a specific answer as, as to why we only got one so when you mentioned that it, a lot of the the cost had to do with the sidewalk pavers was that because I know in this past year, whether it's building a home or building a parking lot or building anything, construction prices have increased. Is, is that across the board on this entire bid or, or what is, what yeah. besides the pavers, is, is just everything more? So the, the items that came in, um, pretty much in line with our bid were the roadway items so the intersections um, the asphalt paving work um, the paver sidewalk pavers uh, came in quite a bit higher than we had estimated um, the way we did the concrete we had the concrete um, that would be the daytime work and then high early strength concrete for the nighttime work uh, the high early strength bid uh, quite a bit higher than we anticipated uh, so mainly it was the, I mean, which the majority of the project is sidewalk work, but uh, the kind of detailed sidewalk work on the outer edges. Mm -hmm. I mean, my last question is a two-part question. When you get a bid from a contractor like this, is any of it negotiable or is that the bid? And then finally, what are the odds of you getting more money from TxDOT? Um, so first part of that question is, is generally the unit prices are not negotiable? Uh, but the scope of the project is negotiable. So if um, like a different material we wanted to go with or, um, or a reduction in scope, uh, that those kind of discussions uh, can be had. And in this case would also be uh, in conjunction with TxDOT. Uh, in, in terms of that funding question, um, I can't answer that definitively. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon to be able to get additional funds. Uh, I think the key is within this program, when we make the request to Austin, is there additional funds that, that they have um, due to either savings of other projects or a contingency they may have had. Um, so, um, you know, I think our best step would be to make that request and, and see, 
once they evaluate that request, what re feedback we get. You know, Chris, I, and I see the, the council's uh, frustration because we've worked diligently to to keep us on a timeline because we didn't want the prices to increase and we want to make sure that we got this thing. We, we rolled it out to the citizens and said, we got to go forward with this because, you know, if you wait at a later date, and we've experienced that before, that everything goes up, and then all of a sudden, you know, we just no matter what we've done, we're looking at a, a price tag that's increased. And so, uh, you know, and I know there's some other things and variables in there, and I'm going to let Chris talk about some of those that he's uh, talked to me about. But, uh, you know, it's just frustrating when we have to go back out and let the citizens know, well, it's going to cost a little bit more, or a whole lot more money. So, Chris? You bet. Council, I'd like to just. Um bring up a new the historical aspect of it that maybe wasn't prepared for 18 months ago and that's we didn't know what we were going to have to do with those limestone pavers uh, uh, and how we would uh, address those and let's you know you got to admit the fact that that's pretty much specialty work where we're very carefully removing those old limestone uh, pave apartment uh, chunks of limestone and having to relocate them very carefully and then also uh, remove the existing limestone curve and, and then reuse it. And then we've got some in storage as well to, to supplement the breakage and what have you. So there's some historical preservation work that's going on here that, that um, may not have been in the scope of work at the time whenever this uh, grant was submitted. And as you all are aware, we went through the historical process with the uh, Texas Historical Commission, and we're actually uh, doing what they asked us to do with those old limestone and that does increase the cost because um, it's going to take some extra time to be careful with that you just can't get in there with a with a little little backhoe and dig up that sidewalk and haul that rock off so we're going to have to be preserving that so that that's a, an added nuance also the uh, water line replacement was not in the original plan either and we decided to do that because we discovered that those pipes were over 70 years old we did plan on about $240,000 cost to do that, and it came in at 270, and we're anticipating spending impact fees to do that. So uh, that's kind of laid out in your spreadsheet how we intend to pay for things, but basically we're utilizing uh, old bond funds from 2007 issue. Uh, there's about $87,000 that's been unappropriated from the park project. You recall the 2007 bond also allowed us to do this project originally. And so that $7.2 million that was in there for streetscape uh, was appropriated towards other projects since 2007. And, and so it, there was a conversation back then, I wasn't around, but apparently it was quite a few more million dollars than what we're talking about today that we anticipated the expense towards. And then the, uh, uh, the other earmark money in the 2015 is what we talked about all along was um, utilizing that um, property acquisition funds that were earmarked for the police department. Since we're gonna move the police department out on uh, Bridge Street, we don't need those to be spent towards that. There was $100,000 uh, of contingency in that bond fund, and then there was uh, $80,000 $80, <laughs> left over from our street projects, and then we have another 75,000 left over from our MIT project that can all be used to fund this project. So we've even got this 75000 to pay those incentive fees and, and ne small necessary change orders that may come up. So the funding is in place to, to, uh, to do this project if you so desire. But as a um, matter of business, I think we should submit a letter to TxDOT uh, asking them for some additional fundings, even if it's a hundred or $200,000 that we can get from them to help us with that and, um, you know, increase our partnership with them as we move forward. But uh, I think it's just a matter of um, they'll never be this cheap again. That's kind of where we're at to this point, so. <coughs> so the, the additional funds that might be available that you've looked at so far are from TxDOT. Would there be a potential that uh, for the water lines, the 272000 that you might get some kind of uh, funds from a uh, Texas Water Development Board or someone like that? Have you looked into that? That would be a loan, um, but we do have the money in the impact fee, right. water impact fee for that right now. Um, 
And that's what it's designed for, is to replace <coughs> aged water lines and upgrade them as needed for the development and what have you for the community. Um, Water Development Board really doesn't have a, a grant program to replace these lines. But again, time is of the essence. If you're wanting to have this project completed by October of next year, um, we need to make a decision and move forward. Captain Mobley, I think you got a question. Chris, I appreciate you uh, at least leaving the uh, possibility open for a smaller scope on this. I know it, likely it won't happen because I think we've got a good plan that at some point we're going to illustrate uh, how well it will work after the holidays. Um, I'm wondering, as far as this quote, if you took into consideration uh, when, when you said, hey, we can do this for $2 million, now it's 2.6, or 2.3, basically, without the, the water lines. Um, the, the requests from the, the folks in that general vicinity that we, uh, or from folks that don't live in that vicinity, to work nights and those type of things. Uh, but also, I can't imagine for a contractor that it's, it's very productive or very efficient or profitable to, on event weeks, to have a three-day work week, pull off on Thursday, and then have a three-day weekend. While for the, the uh, general uh, employee, that's a great idea, but as far as the company goes, I would imagine they have to build some cost in for that for days that yeah. there's literally zero, nothing, zero going on. So I would imagine that plays into the cost. And, and Council Person Meyer, she kind of stole my thunder as far as the construction. I mean, uh, a year ago, uh, j if you just look at the general economy, the economy is much better. And, and certainly in the last 40 days, the attitude is better, uh, certainly around here, as far as possibilities in the economy. Uh, so I can't imagine that a lot of these contractors, based on our timeline and our restrictions, look at this as, as, as a top priority when there are so many things going on in this area. And I just wanted to kind of, if you would focus on your response, focus on that nights and weekends and pulling off on those weeks and how, how that figured into the initial equation. Uh, yeah, so, you know, when we, when we did the funding application, we had not um, gotten into that level of detail of how much nighttime work, um, <coughs> as well as, as those kind of, um, gaps in the construction timeline and as we kind of developed it and with the input from the citizens that's how we came about that that idea that we could do some of that nighttime work uh, the event schedule um, as well like the the thinking was leading up to event uh, we didn't want to get in a situation where construction's happening all the way up to that moment uh, that being said I, I in terms of the, the question about negotiation, I think you're accurate and that does play a role in the cost. Um, so you know, that, that's something we could reconsider uh, in terms of maybe we still do nighttime work, but there's portions that could be done in the day instead of everything against the buildings at night. Um, as well as, as maybe we adjust that schedule where it's just Friday that's, that's the non-working day. I think the folks that live on the square, uh, I think they'd love that idea not to work at night. Uh, because if somebody's banging up concrete in the middle of the night, if, if, if I live five miles away, that's a great idea. If I live two blocks away, uh, I don't know that I like that idea too much. But I would just ask that going forward, if we have a project like this, Kind of make us aware early in the in the process that when we ask for these things, uh, I mean we can do anything. All it takes is money, right? And, and if we're aware of that early, I think I think the sticker shock is is a whole a whole lot more palatable. Thank you. Yes. Well, Mayor. Councilman Couch. I'll just pick up where where something left off. Um, is is does the bid lay out? Um, let's say if, if you did cut back on nighttime work, is it very specific so we'll, we could actually um, determine exactly what the savings would be there? Uh, it is because the, um, we separated that nighttime concrete work from the daytime and uh, we spec a high early strength concrete so it cure really fast. And so that was one of the items that, that um, bid significantly higher than we were expecting. Uh, so purely on the concrete, there's a real 
easy divide. Um, the, the kind of schedule impacts is going to be more of the negotiation. Um, you know, in, uh, and, I, and I don't see it as a negative negotiation because, you know, contractor would be needing to have a second crew to do the nighttime work. Uh, but that's the part that we would have to negotiate with them is, is how it affects the schedule. Okay, and then uh, on the pavers, um, <coughs> if we were to source a better price, um, do you think it'd be acceptable to Fane that, that we, would, we would benefit from that adjustment? Yeah, I, I think if, if uh, of course, he has a labor and a material cost, so if we, if we spec a, a, a lower cost material, uh, usually you can gain a credit there. Um, that, that's kind of how we normally approach that. We would get them to provide us their material cost. We look at alternative well, materials. On the, on the increased cost of the pavers, was it, was it more so the product or was it more so the, the labor? I, I don't have that specific answer. Um, I, I'm thinking of a combination of both. Uh, I, I would think in the case we have here, since it is uh, very detailed work, it's probably heavier on the labor side. Um, but it's, it's worth looking at, and even the quantity of it, um, maybe one element is, is to, uh, w right now we have pavers on the, that change in grade that's on the, the uh, perimeter. Uh, we also have some pavers around the tree areas and the interior sidewalk. And so we could look at, you know, um, areas where we really must have pavers versus uh, maybe could be a concrete. And then just so um, we're clear, I know that we scaled back the uh, project on Crockett where we weren't going to replace the sidewalks under the awnings. So that didn't make it into the scope, right? Or did it? Uh, it did not. Uh, so only the only the portion in front of the awnings is in the scope. That's open. Um, well, I'm, I the other side of this is you know the the market and the demand for for construction and and um, you know we could we could be sitting here with no bids. So <laughs> I'm glad we have the one. And, and given that the, that the water the, uh, on the meters came in $167,000 lower, we could also look at it at that as, as a, a help to the overall cost of both those projects. So that's all I have, thanks. Thank you. Any, uh, any other questions, Council, for Chris or Chris? No, I've got a couple, thank you. Councilman Allen. You're talking about night work. Most time, night work's more expensive than day like day work. Is it? So, <clears throat> you're saying you're not going to work on Friday? Um, the the Friday, uh, it's only in advance of one of your events. So, in a normal week without an event, they would work Friday. Uh, but what we had was in advance of an event. So, let's say um, uh, General Granberry's birthday. Uh, there would not be a working day on Thursday or Friday. We had that in the specs as, as cleaning up the site uh, to prepare for the event. So you get a couple days off. You probably got the 4th of July the same way. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's what ran the price up because you had to work at night because of those days? Uh, no, the nighttime work was to uh, minimize the the construction work in front of individual business. Uh, so what we did is we took, um, so with the sidewalks being, uh, we'll take say Houston around 15 foot, about half of that sidewalk work will be built during the day, the part <laughs> adjacent to the roadway, and then the um, uh, seven feet or so against the buildings would be done at night. Okay. Uh. What is the penalty if, if you don't finish the job by October 2017? Uh, so the way we did it, we actually have three milestones that include a, a penalty or, a, or incentive or disincentive, and it was $1,200 a day um, at each one of those increments. 
and we put the same penalty on y'all or more, or is that legal? <laughs> is that legal? Well, I know we got, I've asked for higher deals, and people said, well, you can only do a $100 on certain things. That, what is the deal on that, Chris? The amount that's uh, $1,200 a day has been vetted by TxDOT is the maximum that we can put on there. And we also provide an incentive of the same amount sure. on each one of those milestone areas. Mm -hmm. That's that, what, oh, that's right. what I put $75,000 in your spreadsheet. I think he's trying to get in Chris' pocket. Yeah, uh, you're not going to be able to get in your consultant's pocket, so that's not fair. <laughs> what do what do we have? This Chris, you Chris, what do we have left in the? Uh, if we take the 270 out of impact fee, what we have left in there roughly? Um, not a lot. Um, we we pretty much spent those funds on, on all these projects we've been doing. And then we turn around and we we may be given a developer. A pretty good impact fee free with some trading on property no doubt about it so yeah. you know is there in, uh, my question is is there impact fee that, that okay? impact fee will affect about 20 homes out of that eight uh, hundred okay. so it's not that big. we're in good shape okay yeah, yeah. The, the impact fees are designed to uh, be spent on okay. growing our community mm -hmm. and it, on the backs of those the people yeah. that are coming to grow so not on the backs of the existing taxpayers so that's why we're utilizing these funds. We're going to upsize that pipe and, and get rid of that 70-year-old cast iron water line that's underneath that street before we redo the street. So when it's all said and done, we'll have new infrastructure under there. Atmos is planning on moving forward in first week in January to replace the gas line that's in that area of Crockett and or, uh, Houston and Bridge Street. So uh, that will be the first thing that happens, and it's not even us doing it. But that happens the first week in January. Yeah, how about TxDOT? When are they coming in? TxDOT is us. I mean, we, we're doing the work for TxDOT. The road? Uh -huh. They're going to pay us? No. <laughs> well, through your grant. To the grant. That's right. Through your grant. Money. <clears throat> you know, I might just add that uh, it, it has been a long, drawn-out process, and I would rather have been having this conversation last October. And... Uh, we just weren't able to get there for whatever reason. So yeah, first, first or second council meeting I was on six years ago, they voted to move the funds from the down the square to the airport. Okay, four million bucks. Okay, so isn't it right, Mickey? So it, it's all a, a big. It's a, you know we we want to say well this is this fund and this is that fund, but at the end of the day it's. It's our community's money, and we're appropriating it different ways to do the projects. Hats off to you all for moving forward with the projects you've got. We've got about $43 million worth of capital projects to do in the next 12 months, and we're looking forward to getting it done for you. And this is obviously a $2.7 million portion of that. So high priority, high, uh, high people, related impact and I think that probably has something to do with the, the bids as well um, whenever we have public hearings and our newspaper puts the front page top fold what's going on from their perspective and the bidders read it that may have may have thinned out some of the contractors as well yeah uh, it's not for the faint of heart and uh, I think we've got a good contractor I've looked at the information that Mr. Bosco has sent me on the previous jobs they've done and They've got a pretty healthy resume of doing projects such as these. And that's a good thing. I see Keith out there one. You're, you're okay now. Okay. It's the only thing I wanted to address, you mentioned 165000 savings. The other item that we do have with that is about 230000 in contingency. So if, you know, you, the impact fees you've got designated at rate, but if you so wish, you could use any surplus funds we have from the Water Development Board on the meter project towards that as well, towards any water lines within it for the loan that you've already closed. So I want to make you aware of that is at least that you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, we would obviously want to get through that meter project uh, before we decide to use those funds, yeah. but we don't see uh, There are some things out there, you know, how many lids are we going to drill and, and some other things, but we've already identified some savings by doing dual meters. Uh, that resulted in another 70,000 savings, we believe, before we get towards the end of the project. So 
we will have probably some funds left to apply towards that that could lessen that as well. As Mr. Kaufman said, put it all together, and I think Mr. Couch too indicated that as well, that you know, I think we're going to have some funds that would be available for this project as well. So, sorry. so would we be able to use those as reimbursement funds at the end of the meter project? The reimbursement may be an issue just because of the procurement of getting through the MWBE process. If it's somewhat similar where they go through the two procurement methods and follows what one of them at board, I think we could get the reimbursement, but that's something we would have to check. So okay. There's a possibility, though. It's a strong possibility. Certainly a possibility of that. If, if you went ahead and used the funds, you know, we are just have to go through the water bomb board and say this is for water line replacement with the excess funds. Shouldn't be a problem with drinking water SRF. That's what it's for. It's the reimbursement part of how did you go through it the first time. We'll need to check it. So, so maybe if we were going to make a, a, a recommendation or a motion, you'd want to make it to authorize the city manager to move forward, procure the funds, any source necessary, and uh, get her done, you know, something along those lines. Chris might be able to articulate something better for us. But, I mean, there's opportunity to apply for more funds from TxDOT, and there's opportunity to allocate some of those monies left over from the water meter project towards this. So that's a new a window of opportunity we hadn't considered previously. Yeah, I think we'll go, you know, go forward immediately on requesting the additional funds from TxDOT. Uh, one thing I, I did want to note in, in the motion, just the feedback from TxDOC is saying that uh, any motion will be contingent on TxDOC's approval. Uh, they're still evaluating the bid themselves, independent of us. Uh, so they ask that, that that be included. Mayor, I have a motion. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think we have a motion. We got a motion, uh, Councilman Couch? Um, well, I got a question first. Um, <laughs> do you want two separate motions on the no. on the water line and the streetscape, or just the street streetscape? No. I think we should put them all together, right, Chris? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just, just take a breath okay. in between and do it all. <laughs> all right. I'll make a motion to award the, uh, the streetscape and the water line improvements uh, to the Fain Group for a total price of two million. Five hundred and ninety-eight thousand six hundred and seven dollars, and then to also instruct the city manager to seek out um, additional funding through uh, a supplemental from TxDOT through the grant program and any other means necessary. Up, upon approval of TxDOT, right? You want to put that in there too? Upon the approval of uh, TxDOT. So we have a motion, Councilman Couch. I think he's covered everything in there. So moved. We have a second by Councilperson Myers. I will state also in the comment here that uh, you know I was prepared not to pay additional money this soon, but actually looking to probably pay additional money on whatever we un uncover or during the construction, so I hope we don't get into something like that. I mean, and we're talking digging up gas tanks or whatever we come up on because we're, we're restoring an old downtown square, so I'm hoping that we won't run into some some uh, barriers there, which you do a lot of times, so hopefully we won't do that, but uh, we find some more money, I guess. Mr. Allen, you got some comment also? Yeah, I got, I got a question on that motion. Are you saying if we don't get money from tax dot, we don't approve this deal? Yeah, but it has to be approval of a tax, a tax dot, everything we've talked about, yeah. So if we don't get no more money from tax dot. No, not additional money, the money that we've already been promised. Okay, okay. yes, okay. Yeah. okay. But we're gonna, we're gonna allow the city manager to go out and, and, and do that also, money. right. Exactly. Fund this any way necessary. Right. So, council need more comments on the uh, the motion in the second? I have one comment. Councilman Person Myers. Um, I consider this an investment in our community, regardless of, you know, all the discussion that we've had. It's so important to obviously look at the numbers, but I'm excited about the opportunity that the community is going to benefit from when we make not only our our streets you know, better and our water system better, the flooding that we've had downtown, 
but I can tell you just Saturday night during the Christmas, the Living Christmas Cards, I had a 14-year-old grandson and a four-year-old four granddaughter down there. And our time was cut short because my 14-year-old grandson busted his bottom on the sidewalk and bunged up both knees and ruined a very par expensive pair of jeans that my daughter bought him. So I think for the safety, it, it, it was, I, I didn't want to take a picture, but I kind of looked around and people saw me. And they didn't know who I was because I had a beanie on, but I thought, this is someone upstairs telling us we need to get this fixed. So with that being said, I just want us to have a safe, beautiful downtown. Any more comments or discussion, Council? So we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. We have one nay. With that said, that is approved. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Edna. Thank you, Keith. Council, if there is no further discussion, we have no executive session. This council meeting will be adjourned. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry yeah. Christmas.